Hello everyone, this is Kelly with Two Women in Crypto. Wanted to leave you a quick update prior to diving in today's episode. Andrea and I wanted to let you know that we are going to be canceling our streaming through the Podbean platform. So this means if you're listening to this episode through Podbean or any of our other partners such as Spotify, Google Play, and or the Apple iTunes platform, that you'll now... Um, after this episode, you'll only find us on YouTube and Rumble. This has nothing to do with the Podbean platform. They've been amazing. It's been awesome. We're so thrilled. We've had well over 3,000 downloads and we have a great follower, a lot of followers through uh, Podbean and other platforms as well. But we just are streamlining our process and we have decided to just stick with YouTube and Rumble. So just wanted to let you know that you can find us from this point forward. So episode 97 and onwards will be only available through those two avenues. So thank you so much for being here with us. We hope to see you through those platforms as well. And as always, huddle on. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Welcome to Two Women in Crypto, a weekly podcast birthed on a whim by two women who are excited about the cryptocurrency landscape and have a shared passion about empowering others to step into the digital, tokenized world of the future. We offer tips, tricks, and our own individual insights as to how to begin to navigate this shift. We are not financial advisors nor experts. We are just here to encourage you to look at the possibilities. So welcome to the future. You're right on time. Good morning. Good morning, Kelly. How are you? I'm well. How are you doing? (laughs) I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I was getting like cracking up. You know, I I love the fact that... uh, the SEC tried to appeal the Ripple case and they got denied. Right. Yep. So, and I think there was a whole bunch of memes going around. I know you shared one where Gary was uh, frowning. Uh, uh, uh. Sorry, Gary. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's it's so interesting because Judge Torres, right, the judge that oversaw the whole Ripple lawsuit, she made it a point to say that XRP and Bitcoin are the only two digital assets that have regulatory clarity in the United States. So now there's all these rumors going on that the SEC should just drop the lawsuit against uh, Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse because, you know, the SEC keeps losing. Right. So like they should just cut their losses and, and move on. Um, super interesting too, because last week we covered the hearing where Gary Gensler was getting questions and um, it was McHenry right? Patrick McHenry, that was, you know, not threatening Gary Gensler to like drop a subpoena on him because Congress keeps asking the SEC and Gary Gensler, give us all of these documents, right? Because they're trying to get legislation like wrapped up. You know what I mean? Like we keep proposing all of these bills. We need all this information. And Gary Gensler is refusing to give Congress information. So Patrick McHenry's like, I don't want to have to do this, man, but like, we're going to subpoena you. Right. And then it was like a week later, you know, first time ever in United States history, McCarthy just gets voted out as the Speaker of the House for the Republicans. And who's the temporary Speaker of the House? Patrick Henry. <laughs> yeah, it's a really interesting, such a historical time, really. I mean, it's such a good point because like our whole world is changing. Right, right. You know, like our financial system is changing. Our government is so unstable. And that's the thing. It's just like, 
whether you're for, you know, uh, McCarthy staying in the house, whether you're against him staying in the house, all it shows is how unstable the United States government is. Yeah, just unprecedented times. Um, and to be able to be in the awareness of what and how quickly the landscapes are changing and that there's going to be a lot of chaos as these the dust settles. And I don't even think half of the dust has been stirred up yet. So there will be a lot of changes ahead. So many changes. And yeah. so once again, everyone, this is why Kelly and I, we make these videos every week because our world is changing so quickly. And through all of the research that I've done, that Kelly has done, I've been in crypto since 2017, full-time since 2020. And we keep saying, hey, it might be a good time. Buy some Bitcoin. <laughs> right? So, you know, because there's such unprecedented times. Right. Right. Yep. Very and historical. It, right. So when we think about Bitcoin and during the 2008 financial crisis, that's when Satoshi Nakamoto dropped the white paper about Bitcoin in response to that financial crisis. Okay. So we had a crisis, Bitcoin emerged and what, what's happening right now. I mean, we're, we're probably going to go into an even larger crisis, right? Is it going to be a debt crisis? You know, there's so, you know, big, <laughs> They're like, there's all these jokes going around with bingo cards, right? Like pick the crisis that's going to create the dollar losing even more value. And, and sure, we want our physical gold. We want our physical silver. We even talk about, we, you know, everybody here got their glint cards so we could pay for things in gold, but digitally, right? Not as safe as physical gold and silver, but the other option is holding some Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general. Right, right. Yep. Next few years, lots of changes. So, but to your point, I think that we're the next, I mean, the next few weeks, we should have some amazing buying opportunities. None of this is financial advice, just as a segue here, just here chatting and providing some entertainment for your morning coffee. But yeah, I think there's going to be some great buying opportunities coming up yet again. Not that there haven't been. Well, exactly, exactly. And, you know, like, I don't know if like folks have been reaching out to you, Kel, but I've been getting like a lot of calls and text messages, like, you know, is the bottom in for Bitcoin? And the bottom line is this, like, no one knows for sure. Sure. You know what I mean? But but this is what we do know. Bitcoin hit $69,000 at the top of the last bull cycle. Today, this morning, Bitcoin is 27.5. Could it go back down to 20? Sure, but that's why we just dollar cost average. So we kind of take the guessing game out. So if the market does dip and if it dips hard on that day, that's a great day to DCA in, you know, maybe a little bit heavy, you know, more heavy. So, you know, we're going to see how this plays out. Um, you know, the government shutdown, the, just the threat of the government shutdown, again, showing instability in the United States government, we saw Bitcoin pop. Yeah, we did. Yeah, during that right. period. So do we think that our government is going to stabilize or do we think that the government is going to become more unstable, right? And this is my thesis. I believe the government is going to become more unstable. Yeah, yeah. I think there's quite a bit of shaking yet to happen. Right. But I do like, you know, there's probably, you know, I, I don't know all of the people that are going to be um, considered for the next Speaker of the House for the Republicans, but Tom Emmer's name is one of the senators that's in, that's, that's, that's in the mix. Tom Emmer is the senator who put the anti-CBDC bill in. Mm. He's pro-Bitcoin, you know, pro-fair regulation of cryptocurrency assets. And, you know, so my vote is for him. We'll see how it plays out. I, I would love if McHenry can stay too. He's great, you know, I've been following him now for a couple of years. And it's like, we want people in Congress that are pro-sovereignty, right? 
aren't going to try to block or criminalize the ability to self custody your Bitcoin and cryptocurrency assets. Really important, right? Because mm-hmm. every individual has the right for privacy to hold their gold, to hold their silver, and to hold their crypto. It should be a no brainer, you know? Um, and it's kind of why I wanted to talk a little bit about this video that I came across because being in crypto this week, there was just so much like FUD and there's so much fear around so many different, you know, scenarios that are going around. So I always try to find a positive story. And that's kind of what I wanted to chit chat about today. Okay. All right, let's do it. Let's cheers. Oh, I got my cup right here. Got it. Cheers. I love you. This These is great. Rogue's going to come in and join us. Special needs dog today. What's up, Rogue? <laughs> He's just an emotional kid. So <laughs> he's going to join the party. I love when he joins the party. Yep. All right. So let's talk about this. So two weeks ago, um, <clears throat> Cointelegraph hosted a video about uh, Bitcoin adoption in Cuba. And I just kind of, it's really hard for people in the United States to comprehend, unless you've traveled internationally, to comprehend what is it like living under Marxism and communists, right? Mm-hmm. Communism, okay? Because this is, this is really important. And, you know, when I see certain people in the government of the United States, they want this, right? I mean, we, we've heard the agenda, you're gonna own nothing, you're gonna be happy. So let's see how happy the people in Cuba are by owning nothing, right? <laughs> and, and it's just, you know, so it's like in 1962, we had the Cuban Missile Crisis. And what their government did was like, they created a Marxist state, a communist state. And what that means is everything is centrally planned. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everything is planned from the government, whether you're talking agriculture, transportation, unit, electricity, right? Businesses, corporations, you go to Cuba, there's no grocery stores, there's no Walmart, there's no Starbucks, okay? Like let's, you know, and and again, it's just like, I think you can have some good intentions with some of these theories, but at the end of the day, when the government centrally plans your life, it disrupts it. And the, the, the amount that the peso has devalued since that time, is on an astronomical level. And when I look at the United States and England and Canada with the with all these crazy laws being passed to take people's rights away, you know, it's um one, it's really freaking disturbing, right? <laughs> you know, just to say it. But but I think we need to understand this because again, it's just like if I'm reliant hundred percent on the government for a food subsidy, right? Or like, you know, you get these government subsidies and um, forget what it's called. I had written down, uh, they, it's, it's called an MLC. So instead of using the peso, you get a card with an MLC and then you can go to the like local bodegas or whatever it is. And you can use that card for not even like high quality food. You're allowed to purchase things but but if you have a peso, a dollar, or a Bitcoin, you can get higher quality goods and services. Very interesting. So we can look at that MLC in Cuba like a central bank digital currency. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it so reminds me of Star, <laughs> Star Wars and the bar scenes is how many credits do you have? And do you have the kind of credit can that can buy you this type of drink or what have you, right? I mean, it's it's... It's very reminiscent of what we've been shown in so many different ways, but interesting. Right. And it's just like, you know, it's like an indicator for United States and other countries as well as like, you know, when the government comes in and like what Cuba did is like they implemented price controls. So that's great. You know, you could go get a cookie for a quarter, 
but you don't have a freaking quarter, Kel. Yeah. You have nothing because two years ago, $1 was worth 25 pesos. Today, that same dollar, 250 pesos. So in two years, that's how devalued okay. the peso became. Okay, so if we think about the United States dollar and we're looking at that devaluation of the United States dollar, right? Through our debt crisis, we have over $33 trillion in debt, which none of us under, no one understands it, you know? But I do understand that we just put a couple billion into that level of debt. So if we're putting a couple of billion dollars a month, adding that on top of the 33 trillion, right? And the rates are 5%. Are they going to be 6%? JP Morgan is saying he, he, he wanted, uh, Jamie Dimon was like, I wouldn't be surprised if it hits 7% that we have to pay back our debt at 7%. Can the banks, can the businesses, can they actually do this? We're going to see. Very, yeah. very interesting. But again, it's just like when the government takes control over every aspect of your life, your life is going to not be as good. I guarantee that, right? And that's that's just the way it is. So because of all the different embargoes, sanctions, right? We put sanctions on the Cuban government, okay? There's no cryptocurrency exchanges in Cuba. Mm, yeah, that doesn't surprise they, me for sure. Yeah. They shut the internet down in a lot of places in Cuba and how easy, right? I mean, we just had like, people were freaking out yesterday. Oh, it's October 4th, you know, we have this national emergency, you know, nationwide. It's kind of like, okay, was that a test for something to come with a cybersecurity attack possibly, right? Or, you know, was it just a test? We're gonna find out, you know? This is just a test, but Bitcoin is going to go back up into a bull cycle, folks. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of speculative, you know, speculations out there as to what all that's about. But yep. So anyway, what I found, and <laughs> we're gonna add, we're gonna include the link. I, I encourage everybody, you know, it's like 20, 25 minute video, I think. Every single person should watch this video and share it with your friends and family because I had no idea. So the Cuban people, the, the majority of the population, highly educated, doctors, engineers, lawyers, they're very bright um, society. And what they have done mm -hmm. is they, they transfer Bitcoin peer to peer through the lightning network hmm. and they were able to integrate doing some peer-to-peer -peer transactions using telegram how freaking cool is that so peer-to-peer -peer just transferring their wallet addresses between each other yeah exactly yeah. exactly mm -hmm. so it's like if we went and we visited cuba mm -hmm. we could just bring our wallet right with our bitcoin on it and then if we, you know, a lot of the stores are starting to accept Bitcoin, but mm -hmm. like you can actually sit down with someone and be like, hey, can I get, you know, a hundred pesos? I'm going to, I'm going to give you some Bitcoin. So they do the smart contracts, you know, through Telegram and it's like, okay, I accept. And then I'm going to send you the Bitcoin. And then the person just hands the other person pesos. This is 100% peer-to-peer -peer transactions without government involvement. And because the government is not involved with the Bitcoin transactions, the, the person there that was interviewing the folks of Cuba, he was saying, you haven't felt or seen this much hope in such a long time. Three years ago, getting an Uber type service was unheard of. Today, you can get it. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. And it's so important to understand that this is the use case for Bitcoin. It's not about the Bitcoin ETFs. It's not about the Bitcoin price going to the moon. It's about sovereignty. 
right? So I can purchase goods and services without government interference because when the government interfered, right? The government owns everything and the people own nothing. So we need to, we need to reverse this track that we're on, you know, and we can do that peacefully using Bitcoin. There you go. I love it. I mean, I this is, <clears throat> yeah, I was like, I watched the video, I was getting like chills and I had like tears in my eyes because like, I understand what it's like, you know, not personally, but like I see, and I've always watched people, you know, like when you have nothing and, and when the power is out of your control, like Bitcoin is peace, Bitcoin is hope. And now we can do peer to peer transactions for goods and services, and it can really turn the whole entire country around. Yep. There's workarounds and we're going to create them. So that's awesome. Right. Because yeah. like when I look at Canada and I see the censorship that's going on now, people in Canada are blocked from uh, Bloomberg News, Fox News, I think CNBC. There's like a whole list. So if you live in Canada, you're blocked. Yeah. Okay. You're censored. And it it's very, very concerning because like whether you agree with other people or not on certain issues, people have the right to be able to speak freely, right? I mean, that's that should be a given, right? <laughs> Inalienable rights, right? So freedom of speech is a really big deal and it's the same thing with our money, right? We should have sovereign money outside the system. So if an emergency happens in the United States, people can automatically shift over to Bitcoin. Those that are in their state of awareness and things that they're doing, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So and the uh, cool thing, the cool thing is too, is like the fees on the Lightning Network for the peer-to-peer -peer transactions are pennies. Yeah, that's awesome. You know what I mean? So it's like even if it's not a hundred percent scalable, even if it still has some problems, it's working. And that's the bottom line. It's like if you're living on pesos and central bank digital currencies like an MLC you're not living your best life, right? But but again, this money outside the system, I'm, I'm gonna be following this because like we could see this country thrive, right? Yeah. And I'm seeing adoption in Argentina, I'm seeing adoption in Turkey. It's all of the countries where their dollar is losing value very, very quickly. Everyone moves over to Bitcoin, right? The government was potentially going to shut down the Bitcoin's price go up or did it go down? Oh, of course. Yeah, it went up. Yeah. Right. So, right. So it's like, it's, I mean, it's so obvious to us. I'm like, right. let's spread the word, folks, because I want to see everyone thrive. And I don't want to, you know, like, I mean, I don't want a lot of things, but like, you know, if we just hold a little bit of Bitcoin just for peace of mind, right? right. Yeah. It's just, it's going to make a big difference. And again, it's the dollar cost averaging aspect because not everybody can sit there and, you know, put three or four or five or however many thousands of dollars into the market, but you can slowly add to your bag, you know, $10 of Bitcoin is better than none. Exactly. And that's the thing. It's just like, you know, and again, it's just like, you know, even at 27.5, to me, today is still a good day to dollar cost average, even if everyone's expecting one more big correction. Right. right. Because I believe once these ETFs get approved, more and more countries are going to be adopting it. The Bank of International Settlements, for the love of God, said by 2025, you know, all the central banks can hold one percent of their balances in Bitcoin. So what do you think is going to happen in, in the course of the next couple of years? Yeah. Yeah. Boy, next year is such a powerhouse, too. Whew. Whew -hoo. I know it's, it's going to be, it's going to be mind blowing. It's going to be mind blowing because like we can all speculate on where we think the price of Bitcoin is going to be. But if there's more and more turmoil coming into the systems, right? Our governmental systems, the price of Bitcoin will go up so fast. Your mind won't even be able to wrap around it. Right. You know, I mean, there's many that say, you know, your buying opportunity for Bitcoin is only like in the next two to four weeks, and that'll be your last buying opportunity. 
I don't, I don't quite view it quite like that. Um, you know, there, it's not going to go straight up, but there will be some parabolic moves. There will be momentum as, it, as you know, we go in, when we go through this transition into next year, the Bitcoin having absolutely. So, yeah. 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 I mean, the Bitcoin having the spot ETFs approval, we just got a futures Ethereum went live on Monday, you know, not a huge bump in price. There's a, there's not a lot of people going into Ethereum futures like today, but like it's a step in the right direction. And it's also, again, govern central planners getting involved to block spot Bitcoin ETF spot ethereum etfs probably a spot xrp etf who knows how many of these cryptocurrencies are going to get etfs but when the central planners get involved and slow down the process or block it again we have to look at that okay because they're protecting their bank buddies the dollar you know or or tr and trying to control it okay but what 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 we want to see is we want to control it. We want to control the Bitcoin. I don't care, honestly, if there was like a spot Bitcoin ETF. It'd be great for the price. But like, again, watching people in Cuba, like that's that's the use case for Bitcoin. I mean, besides like helping our energy grid, you know, stabilize, which is another big thing. Right? So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. You know, but yeah, I mean, I'm super excited about it. I, 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 um, I can't even imagine what the price is going to be, but it's it's kind of one of those things where, you know, we dollar cost average, we watch where the price goes, and we're going to wake up one day and Bitcoin is going to be over 30,000, and then it's going to be over 40,000, and then it's going to be over 50,000. And 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 honestly, going from like 27,500 to 50,000, it, it, it could happen in two weeks. Went, went during the COVID crash, I think it hit like what, three to 5,000, it went all the way down to, it yeah. got hammered. And where did it go over the course of the next year and a half? 69,000. Oh right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it can move for sure. It can move. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. You know, and then in the meantime, we're seeing mass adoption, right? So we got Coinbase, we got Ripple just got approved for their license in Singapore, formally approved. Okay, so Singapore is going to be a crypto hub, and they just got their license for cross-border, you know, transmission. So here we go. You know, there's so many good things going on in crypto. There's so much adoption. I can't even speculate, like, what the prices of some of these coins are going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's hard, and that's okay. That's way okay. Yeah. I mean, I think I checked Chainlink this morning, Kel. It was like seven dollars and fifty-seven cents or something. That's you know, like yeah, and like we need Chainlink to connect to all the systems to bring smart contracts to bring traditional finance into decentralized finance. Without yeah. Chainlink, it can't work. Yeah. What do you think the price of Chainlink is going to be? Boy, that's a big project. Ooh, yep, it's one of the top ones. Yeah, when I get home, I'll, I'll I should put a, my my whiteboard together and show everybody, and then we'll make guesses and see how close we can get. <laughs> <laughs> guesses to what the what the, the price, price wise? Yeah, the, the price. <laughs> yeah, energy, energy, it's coming in. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, that's all I got today. We're hitting the road here. We got we got packed life up here in new york so uh here we go we're traveling enjoy the windshield time be safe out there we look forward to chatting with you you're going to be back home the next time we do our podcast so awesome looking forward to it and uh yeah looking forward to seeing everybody and seeing you my dear yes absolutely so until then we encourage everybody to paddle on Your hosts for Two Women in Crypto are Andrea Caldero and Kelly Lair. You'll find more information and details regarding the Two Women in Crypto membership, educational and informative class and event offerings, and more via their website, twowomenincrypto.com. 
Both Andrea and Kelly are available for speaking events and offer private consultations focused on helping individuals navigate the future. Until next time, pot along.